So, what's the answer? All right. The answer for the numerator part is the same answer we got from the numerator part in our T formula, 1.667, right? But previously, we got a negative answer. Remember, we took the absolute value of it. So what did I do? I took the bigger mean minus the smaller mean, right? We went and we found the larger variance. We took the square root of it, so the larger standard deviation is 2.3116. What, again, where did you get this number from, Jose? Remember, we had to take the standard deviation of the larger variance. So take your calculator, take the square root of 5.3667, and that's where we get, that's where we get this answer here, 2.3166. Jose, you only have four decimal places. You only have four decimal places, why? Because we're gonna take our answer and do what to it? We're gonna compare it against two decimal places. So we're gonna use four decimal places because we're gonna round our final answer to two decimal places, right? So when we take this numerator and divide it by this standard deviation, what is our answer? To four decimal places, it's 0.7195, which equals 0.72. So how would we interpret this? Using our table from the previous slide, this answer is 0.5 or bigger, this would be considered a large effect size. That's really interesting. Remember, the significance told us that, the significance test told us that the results were non-significant, that the differences weren't really real. But, the effect size tells us that there's a large difference between these two groups but the difference between these two groups, again, is non-significant. So it's possible. It's possible to find a large difference and it be non-significant, especially when you're working with small sample size. And the opposite is true when working with large sample sizes. It's possible to find a very, very small effect size that is actually significant. All right. Your formula also has another way to find effect size. This is known as the pooled variance. What does pooled mean again? It's a way of combining or adding things. So look at what we have here. I don't like that the author actually changes the symbols, right? He's using lowercase sigma here. This is actually the variance of group one plus the variance of group two. So what is he doing? He's adding the variances and then dividing by two. So he's taking the average variance, right? right? He's taking the average variance and then he's taking the square root of the average variance to find like the average standard deviation. All right, you don't need to know this formula. I'm not gonna ask you to do it on the homework. I'm not gonna ask it on the exam. Then why am I explaining it? Because it's in the book. Now you understand the symbols, now you understand how to use it. What happens when you use this formula. You're gonna be dividing by a smaller denominator. So you're gonna be getting a larger answer. You're gonna get a larger effect size, right? It is better to be more conservative. It's better to use the simple formula. This is the simple formula, right? That's why I have simple formula there in your notes. This one gives you a more smaller answer Right? which I think is better to do because you don't want to overestimate the effects of like medication. You don't want to say that medicine makes a big difference. Right? You'd rather play down the effects. Right? You don't want to give people false hope. All right, and here we go. We're at our glossary terms. So what did we learn today? We learned the independent sample t-test. We talked about the degrees of freedom. Remember what your book says. Degrees of freedom approximate the sample size and they're different for every statistical test we do, right? We did a t-test. The t-test is actually the distribution that we're using, right? Which is different than the normal curve, right? The t-test changes shape. The t-distribution changes shape. 
based on your sample size. When your sample size is small, this is a T distribution. The hump is smaller and the tails are thicker. As your degrees of freedom gets bigger, as your sample size gets bigger, the shape of this curve changes. And when you finally have an infinite degree of freedom, the distribution becomes the normal curve. That's how the T test and the Z test are related. That's how the T distribution and the normal curve are related, right? We learned this formula. The answer we get from this formula is called the obtained value, or the OV for short. What do we do with it? We compare it to a critical value, right? The critical value is determined by three things. The number of tails, the size of alpha, and our degrees of freedom, which comes from our T formula. We can only trust the results of this test when we follow the rules for this test, when we follow the assumptions. The t-test has a major assumption. It's called homogeneity of variance, which basically states that the variance or the variability of the first group is about the same or not really different than the variance of the second group. And the last thing that we covered today was effect size. Remember, effect sizes come basically in shirt sizes, small, medium, and large. Let's hope we never need an extra large. All right, that's it for today. Good luck on the quiz.